Good morning, y'all. Captain Collier here. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Brandon. Fish here along the Alabama Gulf Coast and surrounding areas. Today we are in Mississippi because in Alabama, well, I guess over here in Mississippi too, it has been raining and thunderstorming every single day. It's been so tough to get out and try and get some content for y'all. But we're out here this morning. We're actually about to get stormed on right now, but I've got about 20 minutes at tops before we just get absolutely destroyed by this storm. So we're gonna be bouncing around some grubs for flounder. Hopefully this will pass real quick. We can get on a few fish, take home, cook up for y'all. I think it's gonna be a good day. If y'all enjoy this video or if you learned something, please smash that thumbs up button for me. Let's get to fishing. Just gonna work along this shoreline here. We got plenty of structure. Nice little drop off here into the channel. We may have 10 minutes, 15 minutes most before we get stormed on, but I think it's gonna pass real quick. So we might be able to kind of get out of it, just wait it out, let it pass. But I would like to pick up a flounder or two. Oh, there's a bite. He's on. Mm. <laughs> Second cast. Second cast. And it is a flounder. That's a pretty one too, y'all. Check that out. Woo, he's pretty. And he's a keeper too. Got him on that Fish Bites Brawler. This is the tap out color. Got that paired up with a 3 16 ounce uh, Eye Strike Weedless Jig Head. Y'all check out that flounder right there. Gorgeous. Blends in perfectly with that bank that he's sitting on over there probably with all the uh, rocks and shells and stuff on the bottom but he's probably sitting at about 15 or 16 inches we're gonna get him in the box and hopefully get us another one before the storm rolls up on us here and i've got that rigged up like that so i don't get hung up on all this structure that's over here you still will get hung up from time to time but you're less likely when you have it rigged up like this versus just a, a bare jig head and uh, we're sitting in about eight foot of water and it kind of drops off to about 10 or 15 foot out here. And I think these flounder are just kind of chilling right here on this drop off here. So I'm just bouncing this grub up and down. A thousand ways you can work <coughs> your jigs for flounder, but I typically either do a slow reel pop pop or just a up and down, let it kind of glide up and down through the water. Ooh, we're about to feel that cold AC. Thankfully, we are not very far from the launch, so I'm not too worried about it. If I start seeing a lot of lightning, I will be, but it don't look too bad. There he is. He just hit it, unless I've got a rock. I'm waiting to see if I've got a, a bump. Uh, yeah, that's the fish. Set the hook. Mm-hmm. Whoa, he almost jumped. Really put the hook set in his mouth. Oh yeah, decent fish. Swallowed it. That's a decent one there. Probably sitting around 18. There was no getting off of that one. I mean, it's gone. I may have let him have it a little too long, but I wasn't sure if I had a rock or not, and I wanted to make sure before I set the hook. <laughs> Gorgeous flounder, he's thick too. Man, all right, well that's two in probably five minutes or so. Nice flounder going in the box. Actually in the live well here, I didn't bring any ice today. But they're very hardy fish. The old Fish Bites Brawlers putting in some work this morning. Really like this bait, because it can handle all these bait fish, croakers and pinfish and stuff without just getting absolutely tore up. So you can catch multiple fish on one bait <clears throat> before you have to swap out. Y'all, this weather is so crazy. Like it's sun shining and it's just dark, pitch black dark over there. It is coming this way, but seems like it's pretty slow. Maybe it'll dissipate. I really don't think it is, but uh, you never know. Wishful thinking. I do have some live bait as well through a cast net before I came out here, caught some small pinfish and finger mullets. So I might rig up a bottom rig and try that. Might be able to get us a big one. I really don't think it matters. Boom. 
there ain't a flounder hanging right there. I don't know where he is. Good cast. Got to amp myself up every now and then. Got to have confidence. Oh, there he is. I caught it. I love it. He's on. Unless I got a rock. Uh, no, that's definitely a flounder. We're going to let him have it. A few more seconds. Uh, that's probably good, I think. Hopefully it's not a rock. Oh, not a rock. Definitely a flounder. <laughs> hey, yeah. And my GoPro just died. Yeah. <laughs> I love to see it. Love to see it. He inhaled it. Inhaled it. Man, I love these fish so much. I love them. Got you. Gotta love them. Everything about them. How they look. How they taste. How they fight. That is another 15, 16 inch probably. I'm gonna put them right in that live well. I'm gonna be eating good tonight. Well, we got three flounder in about 15 minutes. I think we're gonna go ahead and put the boat on the trailer and hopefully wait it out because I really don't want to get caught in that. It's not smart and we're right here by the launch. So it's real easy. Just put the boat on the trailer, wait it out come back out hopefully they're still here if uh, we do come back we're gonna be throwing live bait see if we can get any bigger flounder I don't think it's gonna matter but I've got some live baits I want to try out anyways dropped his pole in the water <laughs> he thought he done got struck by lightning <laughs> he done said the heck with that i ain't fishing no more <laughs> it ain't worth it yep we made a good call it's bad So while we got some time to kill, uh, if y'all are looking for an accurate radar app to show uh, storms and rain and all that, highly recommend this app right here. It's called Radar Scope. You do have to pay for it. I think it's five dollars, but it is very accurate um, versus like the Weather Channel app. It'll tell you the way that it's going, how bad it is, and uh, hopefully this kind of moves out, and then we'll be able to get back out there. And Get on some flounder Whew, that was some bad stuff right there guys took about an hour for it to pass but it's finally over with probably got about an hour to fish we're gonna call it after this regardless if we catch any more or not but i think we are because y'all check out that live bait right there about a three four inch finger mullet just got that rigged up on a carolina rig 20 pound full carbon leader we're just gonna kind of do the same thing we were doing right before we left and hopefully we can pick us up another flounder still the same conditions falling tide right now i'm just going to kind of work our way out towards the, this mouth here just swimming off with it what in the world what is that oh a mangrove <laughs> not a bad one he might be legal here in Mississippi, mangrove snapper have to be 12 inches, and that guy is gonna make it. He is 12 and a half. He'll make a nice little sandwich along with them flounders. That feels like a fish. Unless I'm hung up. Sure, nope, that's a fish. Got him. That feels like a flounder. I want a pinfish. Might be a mangrove. What is that? Oh, it is a flounder. Okay. I thought so. Decent one. Yeet! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Another probably 17 inch fish. On the pinfish, baby. 
That's what I'm talking about. Live bait works too. Well, y'all, the bite slowed down a little bit and we have storm number two approaching right here behind us. So we're gonna go ahead and boogie on out of here before we get caught in another mess. So we're gonna put the boat on the trailer, get back to the house, prepare this flounder, throw it on the grill and enjoy a nice, healthy meal. <laughs> We have made it back to the house, ran through another storm on the way back to the house here. But before we get these fish cleaned up, I wanna show y'all one thing that I pretty much always do before uh, or when I get through with a fishing trip. And that is, of course, flushing the motor here. And most of the newer motors have a little stub out here with a thread where you can actually just thread a, a water hose right to it. And that will flush the entire system versus actually having to hook earmuffs to the lower unit right there and start your motor and run it that way. All you have to do is hook a hose up to it, let it run for 10 or 15 minutes and you're good. But what I have been using for the last year is this salt away right here. This is not a sponsored video. I wish it was because this stuff is expensive, but it works and I continue to buy it. You can buy this uh, whole, let's see, 128 ounce jug here off Amazon. I think it's like 40 bucks. And I'll show you how this works. It's real simple. It comes with this little canister here and this hookup. All you do is fill this canister up with that salt away, screw it onto here, and then you can screw it into your motor and flush that salt away and try and get all that salt built up out of your thermostat and through your whole system out of the motor and then you can do that for a few minutes and then flush it with fresh water after that. I usually fill it all the way up just to where the threads end or stop. Screw it onto here. It's got a gasket to where it won't leak. You do have to make sure you screw it in pretty tight. And then we're gonna unscrew this from the motor. Screw this in here. All right, we're gonna pressure up the hose. And if y'all can see on this dial, it has off switch, it has salt away, and then it has the rinse. So this is just rinsing fresh water. This is just the turn off completely. And right now it's flushing that salt away through the whole motor, just as you would if you were to hook earmuffs up to a lower unit, start it, flush it. I'll let this run for about a minute or two. And then I'll come over here and just turn it to the fresh water and let it rinse for 10 or 15 minutes that way. Not only can you use this product for flushing your motor, but for pretty much spraying everything on your boat, getting all the salt residue off, especially your trailer, your wheels, your bearings, pretty much everything. Like I said, the T-top, hard top, I'll even spray it on my dash up here. And if you didn't have like a, a day where you just got blood and dirt all over the boat, this is really all you have to do is spray this stuff on here and then uh, just spray some fresh water off after that, rinse it off and you're good. We're just gonna wash our reels down, motor, power poles, everything in between, ladder. And it just eats away every bit of salt that you've accumulated on the boat or the trailer. And you just come back, swap that knob to the fresh water, rinse it all off, should be good. And it won't take your wax off either. That's a key thing. All right, we're gonna go ahead and knock one of these fish out. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat the grill up to about 325 degrees, and we're gonna throw two of these fish on the grill hole. Haven't done it in a real long time, and I've really been uh, wanting to try some whole flounder. And we may do the mangrove snapper as well, but I'm just gonna kinda walk y'all through how I'm gonna prepare this fish. It's, sim it's simple, very easy. I'm just gonna start scaling this fish. You can use a sharp knife, like this sword fillet knife that I, I use. You'll see me use all the time. Or you can use an actual fish scaler or spoon, whichever you prefer. I just have this knife on hand and use it. Works for me, no problem. So I wanna make sure we get all the scales off all over this flounder where we plan on consuming the meat. So that means run all the fins, 
on both sides as well. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the underside too. What up? So we couldn't make it for the catching part, but whenever we start cooking fish and cleaning fish, after I've already cleaned some, he shows up. Y'all know this guy, Tanner Dees. He's got things going on. He actually went and did a uh, CPR training class. Cause he is- he's trying to be a captain like you. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to get his captain's license. So y'all wish him luck. Just, just about got it all the way through. All right, so we've got this fish scaled on both sides. All we're gonna do now cut this head off and you don't have to I just prefer to do it makes it easier to gut this fish all right just gonna clean this gut cavity out we'll get a water hose and just spray it up in there clean all that out but pretty much as long as you got all the guts out you're good and then what we're gonna do now is just make some scores in the meat here you don't want to go too far just slide your knife across those bones, no further. We're gonna do four scores. Four, and then we're also gonna go diagonal as well. And all this does is allow you to be able to put your seasoning inside that meat as well as butter and for the fish to cook thoroughly. So that is one completed side there. We're gonna leave the tail on, but as you can see, plenty of meat up in these crevices. We're gonna stick butter, all kinds of seasoning and good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and do this other side and then see y'all at the grill. All right, we got the grill heating up to 325 degrees. We've got our ingredients here. We've got our flounder, and I decided to go ahead and cut up this mangrove snapper as well. As you can see, I have the scores in the meat. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna coat both these fish with some, uh, this is olive oil. Yeah, some olive oil first, just so it doesn't stick to the, the grating of the grill. And I also have a heating plate on there as well, so it's indirect heat. So we're just gonna drizzle just a little bit on both sides. We're just gonna kind of rub it in because we don't want it sticking to that grill even though it is in direct heat. Flip it over. Great thing about flounder is you have two sides to eat on. And my wife, Lindsay here behind the camera, she said she's gonna try it. I don't know if I believe her or not, but uh, We'll see about that. All right, so we've got the fish all lathered up. We're gonna go ahead and, and let's see, we wanna use some slap your mama sauce, not sauce, seasoning. Put some of that on there. We're gonna open up these scores, try and get it up inside the meat. I think I just broke his tail, I did. Oh well. Kinda of rub it in. We'll do that on both the mangrove and the flounder. It looks like I'm adding a lot of seasoning, but it's really not because you got to think all the meat that's up under that skin is not getting seasoned. So it's really not a whole lot. And then of course, can't go wrong with some garlic salt. All right, and then to finish it off, I have some square pieces of butter here that I quartered or cut in half actually. And I did that so we can perfectly put them inside of these slots here. We probably won't use all of this right now, just enough to keep it moist and where it won't dry out while we're cooking it. All right, and then to top it off, I've got some fresh lemon and lime. We're just gonna sit on top of these fillets here, just like so, make it look fancy. So we got the grill up to temperature right here. We're around somewhere 320, 330 degrees. Somewhere around there should be good enough. And as you'll see, I'm testing out this fish cage here. 
I'm gonna try that on the mangrove snapper and hopefully it won't stick to the grating. I'm hoping the flounder won't either. As y'all see, I have this uh, heat plate in here, so it's indirect heat. Well, I don't know if that's gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough room. I think I will. Go ahead and ease this flounder in here. Oh yeah, we make it work. Listen to that sizzle action. All right, so we're gonna wait about 30 minutes. We'll probably check on it in about 20 or 25 minutes. And then uh, hopefully it's about done. So the time has come, it's been about 30 minutes. It's smelling good out here right now. Let's check them out and see what they look like. Ooh, yeah, they're done. Let's see if we can get this tray out. Oh, like a glove. This one's gonna be a little bit trickier, I do believe. We're gonna use my fancy, fancy fishing reel spatula here. Make sure, oh yeah, it's not stuck. Probably need to let it harden up just a little bit more. Or actually, let's just grab another spatula. Now we're in business. Yep, yep, let's go ahead and get this sucker out. It's all about how you work it. Boom, boom. Look at that, look at that. Oh man, ain't that just gorgeous? If y'all could smell this right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of this butter and minced garlic mixture. Kind of lather that over top just to get out some of that dryness. Kind of get it all up in them crevices. We'll just kind of drizzle the rest over this mangrove. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. I think you're gonna like this the most. It's still steaming hot, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. So if y'all are new to the channel, this is my wife, Lindsay here. She has just recently started eating some fish here in the last couple months. She has tried grouper, speckled trout, snapper, and now she's gonna try mangrove snapper and flounder. And I gotta say, it looks delicious. I haven't done this in a while, so let me show you how to do it. I don't want the skin. You're not gonna taste it, I promise. I mean, look at that. Succulent white meat. It's probably gonna burn my mouth. It's all right. You don't even taste it. I still don't wanna eat the skin. Just, all right, we'll scrape it off the skin. So you don't wanna eat the skin. That's all right. Yeah, we got some Alfredo here, some noodles as well. So we're gonna rate this and this, one through 10. I rate that an eight. An eight. I probably could have added a little bit more seasoning. I don't really care for that. All right, well, she don't care for it. On to the flounder. Let's go ahead and take the skin off because she's weird. Get you that hunk right there. Oh wait, we gotta do it at the same time. I'm gonna eat the whole thing. This big old chunk right here. Wait, wait. You gotta do it without the noodles. <sighs> All right, let's make sure you ain't got a bone. There's a bone. Mmm. <laughs> All right, so come to the conclusion that she doesn't like whole fish, or maybe it's just the fish on the grill. I don't know, too many uh, too many factors, but I eat fish a lot. Maybe the seasoning? And this is really good. I, we did try a different seasoning. We usually use Everglades Fish and Chicken. I use the Slappy Mama and the Lowry's seasoning salt this time. But I guess everybody's got different taste buds, but this right here, it's very good. If y'all haven't tried whole fish grilled, highly recommend. All right, we'll do it again with different seasoning next time, but I hope y'all enjoyed the video. We're gonna go ahead and finish our meal right here. If y'all would like to see any more videos just like this one right here, y'all check these videos out. We'll see you on the next one.